example. I think his main strength lies in tool use and understanding the mechanical um, affordances, it's called. I can't, I can't think of a simpler word, you know, what you can do with objects. Um, he seems to me very clever about that and inventive, which is a sign of intelligence. I think he uses the signs quite naturally, but he's always downgrading them. He's always doing the, the least sign he can get away with. You know, he's not showing um, enthusiasm for elaborating his language. But a really interesting thing happened. When I had to go, I, I sort of, I said to him, um, um, you meet friends? And he immediately went like this. And I was really quite touched. And I said, I said to Lynn, um, oh, that's really nice. I, you know, I must say, I really, I really do like him. And I'm really glad I met him. So she said to him with, you know, signs I couldn't do, Sue really likes you. And he went, <laughs> I thought, <"Ooh." laughs> now, who knows what's going on there. But, you know, I felt sort of touched and pleased. Yeah, it was a real communication there. And, you know, that's, that's intelligent and that's very interesting. I'll be sad to leave Chantek. It's not every day that I get the chance to talk to an ape. But what he can do is nothing compared to the chimpanzee I will soon meet in Japan. over an Asian skyline, an adult male chimpanzee declares his superiority. of my journey in search of some of the cleverest apes in the world takes me to Inuyama in Japan and the work of Professor Tetsuru Matsusawa. Over more than 20 years, Matsuzawa and his Primate Studies Institute have established a group of chimpanzees. They live together in an outdoor enclosure where they've established the kind of hierarchies that chimpanzees have in the wild. Before lunch, the males get excited and put on particularly impressive displays. <laughs> Away from the fray, a chimpanzee called Ai and her eight-month-old baby, Ayumu. Ai has worked with Professor Matsusawa for 23 years. She was born in West Africa and brought to the Institute as a baby. Since then, she has learned to read Japanese characters, use numbers and show off her skills with a computer. At 8.30 every morning, I is called inside to work in a state-of-the-art laboratory. Ayumu is always with her. I plays a vital role in research on our evolutionary roots. Where did humans come from? Why are our minds the way they are? By establishing what a chimpanzee can or can't do, Matsuzawa hopes to understand the uniqueness, or not, of the human mind. Yes. Scientist and ape work on experiments for hour upon hour in a glass tank. Aye. Aye. I'm told to sit down 
and not interrupt. Hello, I. Hello. At last, Hello. in a scheduled break, Hello. I'm granted a chance to meet I. She's surprisingly direct. What a proud mummy you must be. You have a beautiful baby. Yes, you do. Hello. 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 She like to be kissed. I'll kiss her then. She's a kind of teacher's pet. Yes. <laughs> a girl who loved to read the books. Yes. Could you characterize what her particular clever skill is. I mean, in, in children, for example, patience. there are always... Patience. Yes. yes. <laughs> now, teachers like patience, don't patience. they? <laughs> but I think such a kind of patience or concentration is coming from her strong curiosity. Yes. She's curious. She really wants she to really know. She really wants to know mm. what's going on. So that kind of curiosity is very special, I think. It's very rare to find. What interests me is I's skill in understanding numbers. Here she is. Since the age of five, I has been learning to count in much the same way as children in nursery school. When she was young, she was shown anything from one to nine objects, say six pencils, and then taught to point at the corresponding number on a touch-sensitive screen. She then learned to put the numbers, naught to nine, in the right order. In this experiment, numbers are shown in a random sequence on a computer screen. Her task is to touch them in ascending order. She's not only getting them right, but she's doing them very fast. As the experiment progresses, more and more numbers are generated at random on the screen. I gets 90 sequences correct out of 100. But how is she doing this? Does she choose the first number, then look for the next one, and so on up the sequence? Or does she commit the whole picture to memory at the start and then touch them all from her remembered image? Matsuzawa has devised an ingenious way to find out. In a new experiment, as soon as I touches the first number, white squares cover all the rest. Now she only has memory to go on. How many numbers can she remember? It seems she can even get the sequence right with five numbers. I has an impressive memory. She gets almost every number sequence correct and hits the first number in less than a second. What's the significance to the chimpanzees in the wild? Why would they need this kind of short-term memory? Suppose that you, the chimpanzee, are facing to opposing group of chimpanzees. The enemy. Oh, you, enemy. You have to count the number of enemy, and you have to remember um, a group of your enemies there, and how many, and then you shift your attention to the other direction to find the other group of enemies there, and you also have to remind you of the situation of your friends, how far they are, and how many can be expected to rush to help you. Yeah. 
through a passageway deep underground, Matsusawa takes me to an observation room in the chimps' enclosure. Now it's our turn to be inside a glass box. This is Akira, the father of Ai's baby, displaying his superiority to strangers. I <laughs> is giving me a new respect for the chimpanzee mind. When I started my journey, I had no idea of what it's like to be a chimp. Matsusawa's research shows that with a powerful working memory, chimps must be able to hold several ideas in their head at once, just like me. I think. Not many people have believed that humans and the other animals are so close. Not many people have been convincing that humans are the product of evolution. So through the study of chimpanzees, because they are the closest relative for us, we are really convincing that humans are not a special separate species, but we share the common ancestors in the past, and we share lots of traits, even in the field of intelligence. We share many things with chimpanzees. Throughout my journey, I have wanted to directly compare the intelligence of apes and humans, but haven't had the chance. I asked Matsusawa if he would invite a group of schoolchildren to his lab to try the same numerical experiment as I, the chimpanzee. No, he said, he wanted a bigger challenge. I, Dr. Susan Blackmore, 50-year-old psychology lecturer and Oxford graduate, should sit the test instead. You need to get a bit more comfortable with it. Because of this drain, it's a bit tricky here. OK. I'm, I'm not very comfortable. I need to work this out better, because it's not fair to test me against I if she's comfortable and I'm That's not. Will it? Yes. OK, then I think, I, I think I'd rather have can I have something like um, coat. a coat or something just sure. to sit on the floor? I'm not used to sitting on the It's a towel, right? Yeah, just the bigger the better, really. If there's anything bigger, is there anything? OK. Big okay. drum roll. Oh, I'm ready for this test. So, let's start. OK. Here we go. That's quite a lot of numbers. I'm less confident about this. <gasps> Ooh, oh, I made a mistake. I shouldn't talk at the same time. I should concentrate. Perhaps I should try my whole hand. No, that doesn't help. Ah! <laughs> I lost it, that one. I really didn't remember them at all. <gasps> I wasn't paying attention. I realised as I went for that one that I really didn't know what number it was. I knew that was a guess. Yeah. Oh. I've lost confidence now. I'm a failure. Oh. It begins to dawn on me that I'm not just making a lot of mistakes, but I'm going terribly slowly. The 
test is almost over. 